Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Lord a clap off him. Hallelujah. I guess it's time for me to come up, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, glory to God. Everybody said hallelujah. It's not a joy to be back and come back. And uh, thank you. Thank you guys for want to go into the word of God in just a second. You remember that old song? What about a dream? What about a fear? Is I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. As I have blessed the peace with my Lord so near. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Remember that? Say it one time. I'm leaning on Jesus. Sing it. I'm leaning on Jesus. Well, I'm safe and secure from all along. Yes, I'm leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on Jesus. Well, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. Then I thought about the old song. Some of you will remember it. Some of you won't. What a mighty God we serve. Who remember that old song? I mean, I heard it way back in the 1800s when I was a kid. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I believe that today, don't you? Amen. I'm going to go in the Word of God, and um, I'm excited about being here today. And uh, I, I, I didn't want to just uh, preach something because it sounded good. My Probably my second favorite verse as a, as a minister is that I may have the tongue of the learned and speak a word in due season. Because this congregation, what you're may be facing, and I haven't talked to Todd, so I don't even take my phone call. Adam did come, and his wife would take me out to dinner last night at the Married Eyes Lodge, but I uh, haven't talked to them, and I don't know your particular situation. I just know what God put in my heart for today, and I don't want this time to be wasted. I mean, it's not going to be wasted because you're in the presence of God, but I want God to do something monumental in your life. Anybody here ever have a problem? Anybody here ever seen a problem? Anybody here set? No, 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 no. Well, my jokes ain't going anywhere, so I'm going to stop. But the Lord gave me this word for you guys today. It wasn't that I haven't preached particular parts of this, because I have, but I sought him for what he wanted me to speak to you guys today. Because you guys have to admit, these are crazy, crazy times. Now, I, I just got to warn you, I think I've ministered here one time preaching. I know I came and did a musical thing, but I, I, I get loud and I get sweaty. I, went, I had the honor.
honor of preaching at Joel, uh, Joel, Joel's church a while back, and I warned him, I smile a lot, but I'm sure a little bit louder than he is. Nobody laughed at that either. But you have to admit, these are crazy, crazy times. Many of you could say that even here, and I do a lot for the uh, wounded warriors and uh, even traveling to Iraq with some Miss America and uh, Tony Land and I did a tour for them and I still do some things for the government. Even in America, it's crazy, crazy time. Some of you could say that you have never seen the craziness going on in our world right now. And I'm not saying that to be depressive at, at, at all. I just want to preface this, that you'd have to be an ostrich not to see that crazy things are going on. People are insane. I told somebody the other day, and please don't be offended about this if you're watching on the internet or if you're here in this picture. I have, I have friends that are pro ball players in basketball and football and some other people that are, that are friends, so I don't mean this demeaningly. But I don't care how far you throw a ball. I don't care how good your prowess is in sports. If you're crazy, I ain't listening to you. And the Lord told me today to preach on the seduction of the mind. Now, I, I, I briefly mentioned the craziness in our world right now. I mean, it's just crazy. And I, if I leave the platform where the cameras still get me, guys, is it all right? Thank you. The, because I hardly can see and I really like seeing you. The even the social climate in the world has gone nuts. When you have to uh, decipher on how to put on a birth certificate, whether your child is a boy or girl again, you've gone nuts. When you confuse a generation as to who they are and where they are going, and worse yet, you try to confuse them that where they've been, because it's a strategy to subvert people's thinking. Because if you can rewrite history and forget where you've been, then you're lost in knowing where you're going. And you are prone to make the very same mistakes that you did in the past because you forget what you did in the past to get to the place of craziness. You with me? And when you forget where you've been and what got you to that point, then you're much uh, uh, more uh, at a risk of creating the same atmosphere that you did to get yourself in the mess in the first place. Some of you, when you were younger, learned lessons that you have never forgotten. Well, I did meet one crazy guy a while ago. He probably, what, what, what was his name? Bill, where is Bill? I like you, Bill. He was with three other, two other guys. I was going to call them the three stu I changed it to three musketeers. <laughs> but our world has gone slap crazy. But I, it, 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 it's not just because of what's going on. It's because that there is a, 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 a program prophetic that's going to be fulfilled. Now, let me tell you this. Everything that's going on, let me, uh, I'm trying to hurry, and I don't want to get over myself, so I'll just take my time. And if I have to quit, I have to quit. 
the, the Lord said to me about two or three months ago, in all of the craziness here in America, and make no mistake about it, I'm not even talking about what political party you're part of. The world has gone crazy. You, you, you understand that? And the Lord said this to me. He said, every time that a genuine shift in the spiritual realm got ready to happen prophetically, the enemy always, the devil, wanted to mess. Because I will tell you, with all the craziness that's going on, we are about to see an unprecedented move of God that no generation has ever seen before. God is not done on planet Earth. <laughs> glory to God. Everybody say glory to God. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to create hopelessness in the minds of the people of God that there's no hope. But I got news for every stinking devil that may have tried to show up today. Jesus is not done. He is Lord. He's about to reveal his glory like he never has before. We're about to see things we've never seen before. <laughs> glory to God. So every time that there was a great shift on the earth to a, a, a monumental happening, uh, as smart as the devil may, may seem, he is really stupid. He, he may know the scriptures, but he does, he, listen, he knows the, pla the purposes of God. He knows that his time is short, but he does not know the plans of God. The plans of God work to the purpose of God. Plans fulfill the purpose. If the devil would have known that Jesus was going to raise from the dead in three days, he'd have never killed him. So every time that he sees that God is getting ready to do something, he tries to meddle and try to circumvent. Example, when the angels came on to Bethlehem, uh, on the, to the shepherds, and then to Bethlehem, and, and heralded the news that the Son of God was born, it was the enemy that went and whispered in Herod's ear, kill Jesus, or kill the, the, the baby. Because he always wants to stop the plan of God before it comes to fruition. He did the same thing in Egypt when he had Pharaoh kill all the babies. He wanted to stop the momentum that God was about to do through uh, 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 Joseph to, to bring deliverance. You with me? So what he's trying to do is he is trying to cut short the work of God on the earth. In fact, some of you, he has messed with your life because he sees that God's hand is on your life. But one day, he's going to lament the day that he ever messed with you because the glory of God's about to work miracles in your life. So today, having said that, the Holy Ghost told me to preach on the seduction of the mind. Everybody say my mind. Now, here a while back, uh, it, go ahead and put the, the book of, of Romans up for me. Have I got time to preach for just a couple minutes? I'm going to anyway. I came a long way. Can I have it back there? Too? Oh, no, that, that's for me so I, so I don't get, go over time, right? All right. And it's in real big letters, everybody, so Relax. <laughs> Everybody read. I beseech you, brethren, by the, come on, out loud, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your second verse. And be not, but be ye by the, of your, that you may prove what is good and acceptable will of God. 
For those on the internet, let me read that. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word renewing in the Greek means to renovate. When you renovate something, you don't patch it. You tear out the old to put in the... Now, when I was growing up in a certain denomination, I won't tell you what denomination it was. It, I know you can't tell that I was Pentecostal. We all thought that being conformed to the world was how you looked. I remember I was a young evangelist. I pulled up to a church to preach and uh, pretty much wore my hair sticking up back then. And, but these days I'm just glad I got hair. No offense to any, well, anyway. So we all, I remember the first thing the pastor said was, first thing, I didn't go, I was, it was at the door. I'll never forget this. He said, son, your hair, your hair is kind of whirly looking, isn't it? I haven't even preached yet. I'm getting ready to walk in the, and I'm thinking, well, so is that new Lincoln sitting in your driveway. But I hadn't got the offer yet, so I didn't say it. But I was grow, I grew up in that church. You didn't wear makeup. I say, thank God for makeup. <laughs> well, I, one of these days I may get married again. And I've been singing a long, long time, and I've been out fighting the devil for weeks. When I fly in, I want my wife to make up and look good at the airport. Don't you come to me looking and, well, forget it. I, I'm stopping right there. I'm getting, so I thought that being conformed to the world was how you looked on the outside. Until later on in life and reading, I understood that conformity was not talking about that. The, it was talking about stop thinking like the world thinks. So today, for the next 15 minutes, because I can read those big letters back there, I'm going to talk to you about the seduction of your mind. Everybody look at somebody and say, your mind is where the battle is. I want to tell you that the enemy is trying to get the people of God to think like he thinks. Can I come down there? Is that all right? Listen, we spent our whole life. Is it your, I'm using your Bible, right? Thank you so much. I went off and let my Bible at the room, and she let me your Bible. Thank you. And, and Are you over 50 yet? Okay. Do you know... That the devil and the world has spent 50 years training you how to think. From a little kid, we're taught to follow our senses. And ain't nothing wrong with having good common sense. But I want to tell you today by the Holy Spirit, just stay with me. That God wants you to know that when it comes to the kingdom of God, you cannot afford to think like the world thinks. Because what the enemy wants to do, and this is the word that kept coming to my spirit, he wants to trap you into hopelessness. Because when the world gets into a certain situation, they say it's all over, there's nothing I can do. But I came today to tell you by the Holy Ghost that God's about to move in ways that are going to blow your socks off. And he wants to expand your thinking to Holy Spirit thinking. Every one of you needs to know the beginning. Now I've got 12 minutes. That God doesn't all the time make sense. Ah. Amen. Go ahead. Clap those hands right there. What's your name? God bless you, Sherry. God doesn't make sense. Ask Abraham and Sarah. True story. I was preaching on them the other day. It's a true story. I was talking about if God tells you at 90 that you're going to have a baby, I promise you, I saw couples scooting away from each other. I said, relax, I'm not prophesying. 
I'm just telling you, there are some things that God would say that do not make sense. But if God says you're going to have a baby, you might as well march on down to Babies R Us and get your junk you need because you're about to have a baby because God does not make sense. What the devil wants to do to the modern church, he wants to trap you into modern thinking. But the Holy Ghost is about to renovate our thinking that we say, God, nothing is impossible with you. I was going to read out of Corinthians. Just let me quote it real quick. You can read it when you get home, uh, the second chapter. The Bible said, the natural man, everybody say the natural, receives not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them for their foolishness. Look at your neighbor and say foolishness unto him. That means they sound stupid and they don't sound, uh, and, I, and I'm telling you as I was studying this, the Lord kept telling me the word trapped. I don't know who this is for. He kept sending me trapped. They, they're going to feel like they're trapped because when you start thinking like the world thinks, they think once you get into a cert certain situation that it's it, that's over. It's all there is to it. But God is saying that with me, nothing is impossible. Stop thinking like the world thinks. I'm about to give my people miracles. Miracles they never even dreamed of. I am still God. The worst thing, let me just cut off some of this. The worst thing you can do is to have your mind seduced by people that have no F A I T H. Are we on the internet? Uh. sisters in bed. All right. I have a sister that I love dearly. Her name is Anyway, there's seven of us, so I won't tell you it was Peggy. Any I love Peggy. She's my oldest sister and she'll never see this. I won't post this. She's she I love her, but whenever she calls me, she's more pessimistic than anybody I know. I mean, I can be having a wonderful day full of the Holy Ghost. I've been reading Hebrews 11 chapter. I've been listening to God. I've been talking to people. I, my faith is high. And man, by the time she's done, I'm depressed. And worse off, she, she's a practicing non-licensed doctor. How many have one of those in your family? They got all, and now it's not just books, it's the internet. If I, I, I dare not tell her I've got a pain somewhere, do you have this too? Is that going on? What about this? What about this? Before, I mean, I can be feeling good, but time I get done talking, listen, if I'm sick, I don't want somebody to tell me their aunt and uncle died of that. Don't tell me how to die. I want somebody to tell me how to live. Don't you understand that the enemy is afraid of what the church is about to become? We are not going to be weak, mealy mouth. We're going to be full of the Holy Ghost, not thinking like the world. We're going to be on fire for God, getting miracles. Ten minutes. I have a friend of mine. He invited me to his church. And he, his name is Ron. I won't tell you where the church is. Beautiful, beautiful building. Not quite this big, but almost, but beautiful. And I had went there about 15 years ago. Always wondering, sir, why he wanted me to wait 15 years before he invited me back. Well, it'd be funny. Nobody laughed. Long journey here. So I, I went there, and he showed me this beautiful new building. And we did uh, three or four services. And uh, then we went by the other building that this probably middle section is, is, is all the other building was. He said, I got to tell you what happened. I said, tell me. He said, I got to tell you that I was driving by this empty, beautiful lot here in North Carolina. And I, I, I was looking at it and the Holy Ghost said, stop. Now, first of all, because we're all so smart, if it's against what we think, we know it ain't God. Because we all got it together. Y'all want to, 
I just got awarded an honorary doctor degree by university. How do you like that? Thank you both for clapping. God knew I couldn't get one on my own. But we all got it all down. So he said he drove by, saw for sale sign, and, it, and, and he got out and looked at the number. Man, this is gorgeous. Acres after acres of beautiful North Carolina uh, pine trees. And he said, I called the number, and they said, we want a million dollars for it. He only ran 120 people or so. He said, there ain't no way I can come up with a million dollars. He kind of laughed and got back in the truck. But every time he'd go by it, the Holy Spirit started whispering. And then he found himself started crying. He would cry. He would cry. And he said, wait a minute. This ain't, and he called him again. Are you sure? Yeah, we got to have that for it. And he would weep. So finally, he starts arguing with God. I can't afford this. Is, leave me alone because we think with our natural mind what we don't understand is the natural mind doesn't get what God is trying to do I don't know I can tell you how I, how I know this is from God I can't get away from this I will tell you that what you're going to have need of in the coming days will only have come by a supernatural deliverance and the devil wants to keep you trapped in natural ways but I got news for somebody today the way that God's about to move is going to be on the natural realm it's going to be in the super natural realm glory to God he is going to meet your need do you understand that right now that there's more going on the unseen in this building than seen with this nice crowd here brother Seaman if you're watching please invite me back someday listen with what this nice crowd this ain't all that's going on because in this place right now, on a Sunday morning, this place is packed with the angelic hosts of God. They are in this house right now because more goes on in the supernatural. And your natural man cannot perceive it. Let me, let me, let me hurry. So he says he finally called and said, no way. They, they got it. They, they they started a, a committee to build. That they rented the uh, church out to a local congregation. And I'll never forget this. And now, of course, we're in the new building. He's telling me this. He said, one day, the, ba the, the pastor of a small Baptist church, black pastor, said, love God. Called him and said, we love your building. We want to buy it. He said, thank God we need to sell it. He said, we know the taxes. A little small building with a little parsonage. The taxes there in North Carolina was only 480 490, uh, what are praise for? He said, that's right. He said, but we've saved up 280000 and that's all we have to give you. He said, I can't take that. He said, we, we're trying to buy property. We're trying to build. He said, but he said, well, would you at least ask? He said, absolutely. He calls a meeting that night. He's telling me this story. He calls a meeting that night. And in the meeting, he gives it to the congregation. This is what we, uh, it's paid off, but this is what they offered. And you all know where we're at. We're trying to raise money. And they said, yes, sir. But all of a sudden, something supernatural started happening. Because God don't make sense to the natural mind. But when God gets done, he's going to bring glory. Because his word is going to move supernaturally. Glory to God. So he said, all of a sudden people started crying. Even deacons. Now when deacons start crying, revival's about to happen. So he said, people all across the building started weeping, started crying. One stood up and said, Pastor, we got to do this. And somebody else said, Pastor, I think we got to do this. So he began to poll everybody. And the people are weeping. And he starts weeping. He said, are you sure? They said, yes, sir. We got to do this. He said, you know, we need the money. Our natural man says, we need the finances. My natural man says, this is what I do. But there's an unseen principle at work. It's called the kingdom of God. I know that I heard the devil tell some of you. Listen, before I finish that story, I love R.W. Shambach. Two young people don't even know who Shambach is. Anybody know who Shambach is? R.W. Shambach told the story. He said he went to, a, to, to pray for someone in the hospital. And I've got good friends that are doctors, if you're watching. That if any doctors here, we honor you. But this doctor wasn't a believer. He was standing in the doorway, and he comes in, and, 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 and uh, he says, where's the guy I'm going to pray for if you ever listen to our, uh, Brother Shambach? It's cool. And he said, okay. And then the doctor said this, well, hurry up and do your thing. 
Well, he said, well, after I do my thing, you may not get to do your thing. But no, we got people that will text you and get you ready that it's all over. I want somebody to text me that God is more than able, that he still moves supernaturally. Because if you only hope in the natural, the time is going to come that you'll be discombobulated. You'll lose everything. But when God moves supernaturally in these last days, you're going to know that it's God. Before I get back to Ron, now I've got 12 minutes. The Lord do it to Joshua, stop the time. So he, R.W. says, well, after I do my thing, and doctor just stood there, and then R.W. Shambach took the oil. Now, I know that looks, do we still pray for the sick? Why? Because if any sick in money, let, let them call for the elders of the church. Pray for them. Anoint with oil. The prayer of faith shall. Well, that don't make sense. That's for the old days. I don't know about you. Then if I'm sick, don't come praying for me. I met a man the other day. I, I, do, I still do his church. He's almost 90, and he's still pastoring, and he used to travel with A.A. A. Allen. Somebody say, A.A. Hey, Allen, I wouldn't touch. Uh-uh, I wouldn't. Uh-uh. Let me tell you something. I ain't talking about God's people. I don't care what problem they have. He said he, got, he, he was one night in the, in the meeting. I'll get to RW in a second. He said one night in the meeting, uh, 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 the, the evangelist he said to them, he said, hey, Brother Allen said, I want you all, the pastors, you all pray for the sick. And he got mad because he said people didn't come here to have us pray for him. He said up, up wheeled, he was in front, up wheeled a, a woman wheeling her little boy in a wheelchair. He had never walked before, and he was half mad as it was. He just comes and lays his hand in Jesus' name, be healed. All of a sudden, the boy jumps up, and he's telling me this story. He said, the mother goes fasting. <laughs> Honey, sit down. Now, she, she brought him for prayer. Now, she's telling him to sit down. And he said, he said he, he'll never forget. He told me this just a while back. In 90 years old, he said, I'll never forget. The little boy turned to his mom and said, I've been sitting there all my life. If you want to sit down, then you sit down. And he said, the last time I saw them, the little boy was wheeling his mama out. Glory to God. So R.W. says, he took out the oil out of his pocket uh, for the, you know, James, the book of James. And the doctor says, excuse me, preacher, preacher, is that holy oil from the holy land? He said, no, it's oil from the grocery store. And he takes it out and he anoints the man and the man is healed and no surgery. But we listen to the wrong people that tell us God doesn't do miracles anymore. I want my mind renovated that I believe God can do all things like he used to do. He is still God. So back to, back to my story, North Carolina. So he says, people started weeping, and he says, okay. He calls that preacher, and I bet that preacher had a shouting time on the other line. That's when they used to shout, that's what they did. Anybody remember that? I'm from the South. <laughs> we, we forget it. So anyway, he says, he said, I, we made the decision. I called that preacher. It didn't make sense to our minds. We needed that. But what we don't understand, where's, where's Adam? Adam, you still here? You, you done left him. Adam's a pilot. I'm working on my pilot license. I'm working on my pilot license. And uh, we talked about flying last night and uh, believing the Lord for a plane. I just, I'm just believing. And, uh, and, and I was telling somebody the other day that the, there, there are certain laws that are real. The law of gravity is real. You can say it ain't real, it ain't real, it ain't real, it ain't real, it ain't real. Go jump off the building. <laughs> no, don't. I can't afford to get sued. Don't, don't, don't. The preacher said to do it. That is a real law. But when you go to the airport and you get in the jet or the, the plane or whatever it is, there's a law that you start the engines up or engine whatever, and it's called the law of lift and thrust.
left in the wings, drunk. Say amen, Brother Adam. Say, no, I'm not crazy. Thank you. They might still think I'm crazy even if you say it. No, I didn't mean it like that, bro. I, it's called the law of lift and thrust. How many of you have ever flown? I mean, the plane's flown. Okay, no smart, Alex. Do you know that plane takes off? You know why? Because the, even though gravity is a real law, there is a greater law. And the greater law breaks the lesser law. And all of these other things that are real, sickness and disease and depression, I'm telling you today, by the Holy Ghost, there's a greater law in this place. It's the laws of the kingdom of God that break the laws of the back of the devil. So Ron said, they passed it. They passed it. And he called that preacher. He went to static. He said, Pastor Dennis, I promise you this is the God's truth. He said, I'm driving down the road three days later, the number of resurrection. I'm riding down the road thinking about everything out visiting. And my secretary calls me and says, Pastor, are you sitting? He says, no, I'm, I'm out sitting, but I'm in the truck. I'm out visiting. No, she said, are you relaxed? Are you sitting down? I told you I'm out visiting. What's going on with you? She says, Pastor, I just opened up today's mail. And she said there was a certified anonymous check in it for $1 million to the church. What the enemy doesn't you want you to understand, I'm going to close. What the enemy doesn't want you to understand is that God's word and, and faith with it make a chain reaction that starts happening. While you're here, he's already in your Monday. When the prophet said to the city that was besieged, by this time tomorrow, you're going to have more food than you can do, deal with. When he spoke that and they believed the word of God, it started a spiritual chain. I'm going to tell you right now that in the atmosphere, a spiritual chain reaction has already started. God's word will be fulfilled. So I give the Lord a clap off him. Go ahead, one more time. So much I didn't, I didn't get a chance to share. I want to tell you that God's word is real. And what the, I, I tell you, I promise you, I wrote, it, I wrote it in the notes. I kept hearing the word trapped. Even in prayer today, the Lord showed me some things that are going on in this, in this region that were demonic. There's some things that's, that's going on. What we need more than ever is a supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. So if you're trapped in the thinking in your natural mind, you become depressed and you love God, but you're trapped there because you're trying to reason by your natural ability, how can I get an answer? How can I get healing? How can this happen? And the natural thinking sees everything that goes on in the natural, but the supernatural part of the, of the, of the kingdom of God in your mind and in your heart says, wait a minute, God moves outside of the natural. Right before I came here last week, I may have shared this right before COVID. My friend Sam pastors a wonderful church. And he told me, he said, Pastor Dennis, and I go there all the time. He said, I got to tell you what just happened at my church. And they have a beautiful church. Wonderful church. Y'all with me now for three minutes? And he says, he says, Pastor, I said, you got a minute? I said, yes, sir. He said, I don't know if you know this later or not, but I got a lady that's causing trouble in my church. Okay. No, no offense, ladies. I'm glad I'm not her being accused. Because at first I thought about the old story where the lady came to the pastor and said, Pastor, I'm going to lay my tongue on the altar. The pastor said, Lady, the altar ain't long enough. So I said, well, what's going on? He said, she sits on the front. And you know our people, they like sitting on the front. And he said, she's saving a seat right here and won't let anybody save it, sit in it. And now people are starting to get mad because she will not let them sit in that seat. He said, I finally went to her and said, what's, what's up with you? Why won't you let people sit in that chair? She says, I'm saving it for my son. Because God had spoken to her, it didn't make sense. And this is what the pastor told me. He said, Pastor Dennis, now what's, what's silly about this is her boy's in prison. He's not scheduled to be released. But she says she's heard from God. 
and she's saving that seat for her son. And if that, that boy did show up, the marshals would be right behind him to take him right back. But when he called me, it was like a Tuesday. He said, but I got to tell you, last Sunday I'm preaching and the back door opens up. And in walks her boy. She taps him. He taps her on the shoulder. She turns around and he says, Mom, can I sit here? And she said, Son, I've been saving this seat for you. The natural part of humanity with all the craziness would say it's impossible. I'll never get my miracle, my kids, my healing, my health, my financial, but I know by the Holy Ghost. God told me to tell you, don't you dare lose hope. He's about to give you a supernatural miracle. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to pray for you in just a second. I know, I know the Lord gave me this word for you. I know the Lord gave me this word. And he kept using the word trapped. Because when he, if your best friend texts you all the time that you can't have your answer, find a new best friend. You can allow, cannot allow the world to dictate your mind how to think when it comes to the kingdom of God. Because we are not ordinary people. We go through ordinary situations, but we serve a supernatural God. And if I, I tell you right now, if Samson or the woman with the issue of blood or Legion or any of those guys were here right now, I'd have done lost this service. Because they would tell you, I was trapped in a natural situation, but Jesus changed it. And what's a shame, folks, I travel all over the world, you know, not in the last year as much. I will tell you that that spirit has tried to keep people in the churches. It don't make sense. You're going to run people off. I'm telling you the power of the Holy Spirit does not make sense, but I don't care how I get my miracle. I don't care if I weep. I don't care if I have to fall on my face. I want my miracle. So what the enemy wants to do to you is to let your mind, not only in politics and in other thinking, to become subversed by the thinking of negative people when it comes to the word of God. And unfortunately, there are people now even in pulpits that won't teach you what God says about it. I'm not afraid to tell you, I was in a service the other day that, that, that a lady was blind for seven years, just the other day, blind for seven years, and the next morning woke up with sight. Then later healed of death, and I, I was interviewing for Facebook, I know she was healed, because she patted me on the cheek and said, I just knew you were good looking. <laughs> She's going to go for glasses maybe. The point I'm making you is, the world would say, wait a minute, God gave, us, God gave us glasses. He did give us glasses. But I was in a service the other day, promise you, I'm closing. I promise you, the Lord says to me, pray for feet. I argue with him. He said it to me about four times. Because feet ain't glamorous. Four times, pray for feet. And it may seem funny to us, but if somebody's suffering with some kind of a foot disorder, they need a miracle. So I went ahead and obeyed the Lord after about four times. And I'm walking to the congregation. A lady stops me. She said, why you were praying? You don't know this, but I've had cysts all around my ankles and my feet. And while you were praying, I watched them dissolve. to walk on water we don't need miracles I tell you in these last days America and the church and the world needs a supernatural move of God and some of you will get hopeless and despondent and despair let me pray for you right now 
Kayo po sa labas. Talaga po Diyos, ang damit is big kara ko. Let me pray and pray na Holy Spirit for me. Milanda po Diyos, ang dobele ko ra. Mandela man po Diyos. Come on, everybody, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, everybody, let's praise him. Let's praise him, everybody. Young married couples, the hope for your children is that they have the mind of God. Because the enemy is after your mind. He's after your faith. He has tried to make the church lose hope. Some of you need a miracle right now in your life, and you can't figure it out if it will ever happen, and that's when God wants to come through. The Lord says, I'm going to ask you to do some things that's beyond your reason and thinking, but I tell you, I will glorify my name. Where are we? Just 30 seconds. Milana, I want to go so. generations that you have dealt with that never made sense what you told them. And these important times, God, you're going to raise up people that may not make sense, but we will follow you. There are forces at work against the church and against the family. Even in this town, there are demonic, demonic forces that the enemy has set up to try to subterfuge what are to turn and subvert what God has planned. But I declare victory in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one minute. Il amoroso, hallelujah. You're the God that never changes. Now breathe, Holy Spirit. Go ahead and play that track if you don't mind. Don't play it. Il amaro to so, il anamoro so il ama. I ma che chi sei, io no. Lord, we don't want to become like the Greeks in its foolishness. We want to believe you. I was praying for you. Uh, the Lord gave me a prophetic word about somebody's education. A girl came to me and said, "Pray for me." She said, I'm trying to get into this school, and there's 100 people before me. Two days later, she came and said, every person dropped out. Now I got my place. If you're here and you need a supernatural miracle, do not let the devil rob you of it. If you're here and you're fighting cancer, Jesus has died to heal that cancer. If you're here and you have a beginning stages of any kind of lapse in memory, I plead the blood of Jesus on your mind. 
I plead the blood of Jesus against dementia. I plead the blood of Jesus against any cerebral thing going on. I just feel like praying for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against headaches. I come against depression. I come against oppression in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the devil. Some of you right now, there's some marriages that the enemy is attacking. I declare the word of God and peace over your marriage right now. Somebody praise him right now. You need physical healing. Just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Just raise your hand right where you're sitting. Anybody? That one, that one, that one. Hold your hand up. Just keep them up. Father God, I pray for somebody's back here right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Colons, be healed now. I come against a high blood pressure and diabetes in the Marosondo Moreketi Lama Monduma. The lower back, be healed now in Jesus' name. Somebody's eyes are being healed right now. Your eyes are being healed. I come against the headache behind your eyes. It's, it's been a twitching in one of your eyes. I declare healing in your eyes now in the mighty name of Jesus. Peace. 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 Everybody worship. Worship. We got, we got, we got one minute for this, don't we? You are raising a supernatural Lord people that will believe your word in these lands. Lord, if it was in the book of Acts, you must have it again in your people. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So I want everyone to raise your hands and we're going to pray now one more time before they come. Lord, I pray for everyone's minds right now that they are renewed. Renovate. Lord, the thinking of this world, even scripturally, has gone crazy. God, guard minds. And Lord, the mind that says you can't have your miracle. Lord, the, the people that are speaking, put a guard around their mind right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I declare a Holy Ghost shield on your minds right now. When they speak to you, it won't even go anywhere in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus, I come against accusations of the devil. I come against accusations of hell. I come against accusations of hell. Be healed now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare the devil's been lying to some of you. He loves you today. Praise him, everybody. He loves you today. There is nothing impossible with him. I pray for somebody named John right now, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for sons. Let's pray for your sons right now. Father God, I pray for sons. I pray for sons. I pray, God, I pray for sons and daughters now, 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 now. Lord, even when we can't see any way for a miracle to happen, we will not place our faith in what we see but in what you say. Now let's just praise him. Thank you, Father. Healing. Your back is being healed, sir. Healed. Hips. Hips being healed now. Now. Knees, joints being healed now. I come against that spirit of oppression and depression that, that literally is driving you crazy. I plead the blood of the Lamb against that now. taken so much pain to brainwash us. We will not be brainwashed. And everybody said amen. Will you raise your hands and say, I receive my healing. I, I know I went 10, 12 minutes over. Let me just pray for you. What's your name?
please, don't think I got a hobby horse. I don't. I, I'm single, but and, and I've, I, I, in fact, one time I, I got a word that Elton John wanted to meet me and I, because of some of the songs he heard. Let me tell you, I have no hobby horse against against uh, people that, that are fighting the gay lifestyle that, that need deliverance. But I want to tell you, if you don't tell me that it isn't brainwashing when some of the brand new cartoons now are showing that same sex because they're trying to subvert our kids. And then you got people that doubt has a familiar face. And they'll come and say, you can't have your miracle. That, that's the way it used to be. Or you'll just have to live with it. I'm not here to tell you you have to live with it. I'm telling you if God can heal you today. Dennis, what if you pray for them and they don't get healed? I said, but what if they do? God has never made sense to the masses. These final hours, make no mistake, Central Assembly of God, visitors, friends, members, we are living in the final hours. If ever a generation needs to have the mind of Christ, we need the mind of Jesus. This woman looked fluent and just the Holy Ghost said, pray for her. I said, what? Pray for her. I went out in the parking lot. I didn't want to scare her half to death. She came and got to her car and I stayed about 30 feet away and I said, excuse me, ma'am. And she looked at me and waved me off because I guess she thought I was going to need money. I said, no, ma'am, you don't understand. You don't understand. I, I wouldn't do this, but Jesus told me to pray for you. So I, I turned around and I began, she turned around and I began to approach her real slow as not a scare. And I began to tell her what the Lord told me. She began to weep and put her arms around me and said, my daughter's been dying of cancer. And right there, God moved on her heart. I'm telling you, when God says things that don't all the time make sense, but we're not ordinary people. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. the breath of Jesus right now. I say be delivered right now in Jesus' name. Be delivered right now. Somebody with oppression and nightmares and just, just depression, I plead the blood of Jesus on you right now. Something the Lord showed me about this area. He said, I can't tell you, but I will tell you, there are dark forces that have tried to overtake this area. But greater is he that's in this place right now. Give the Lord Jesus a clap offering. So I sit down and I type this out if you want a copy. Give me your email. I'm going I'm to I'm read this to you and we'll close it. I wrote this this week and this, I didn't know that I was going to preach on the mind, but this is what the Lord, for this, this week. Today I declare this over my mind. Today I declare that I have the mind of Christ. Today I declare that I submit my mind to the will of God and to the, his plan for my life. Everybody say amen. Today I declare my mind is not confused and that I have clarity to hear. Today I declare that no mental lapse, dementia, or anything will steal my mind, but that my mind is kept by the power of God. Glory to God. Today I declare that I am casting down any thoughts, imaginations, doubts, and unbelief or anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Today I declare I have the mind of Christ. Everybody say, I have the mind of Christ. Almost done. Today I declare my mind is covered by the blood of Jesus and that the enemy will not be able to penetrate my thoughts. Everybody say, I'm covered by the blood. And that the Holy Spirit helps me to guard over it and reminds me of what God says. Today I declare by Romans 12 and 2, my mind has been renewed and that my mind is redeemed and it's whole and it's being renovated from the old way of thinking I will never be a, 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 the same because I have the mind of Christ. Somebody raise your hands and say, Lord, I want your mind. Have you ever wondered why he said, I would that you prosper and be in good health as your soul. If the soul is, it's the mind, will, and emotions. 
because your mind is thinking like God thinks, then you can receive the promises. So I speak that over you in Jesus' name. I speak that some of you are going to start seeing things you never saw before. I declare in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you will have revelation about a few things that you never even saw before in Jesus' mighty name. I declare that the revelation comes to you that everybody ain't telling you the truth. Even good meaning people. If God says you can have it, who am I to say you can't? Thank you for healing several people right now. I can't get away from the legs. Uh, whether it's blood clots or uh, weakness in, the, uh, in your legs below the knees, be healed now. Healed now. Healed now. Healing now. Excuse me. Healed now. Brian, healed now. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, Brian. Thank you.